السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری واہل العقدم السانی یفق قولی ربی ضدن علما اللہ فقیحنا فدین آمین ٹوڈے ان شاء اللہ ول فردر ایکسپلور دا سیکرٹ ٹو گیننگ ہیپینس ایچ اینڈ ایوری ہیومن بینگ انسٹنگٹولی از ان پرسوٹ آف ہیپینس Contentment or happiness is a basic right of every human being. Unfortunately, some people derive pleasure from robbing others of their happiness. They snatch away the joys of others and deprive them of this basic need. Obviously, we cannot change such people, but what we can do is change our own outlook to life. Modify our behavior so such sadistic people are unable to harm us or take away our happiness. The first step we need to take to ensure our emotional well-being is to be aware of the changes we need to make in our attitude. Be mindful of our actions and our reactions so we can make the necessary modifications. There are basically two ways to spend our lives. The first way is of demanding perfection and excellence in all what we do. By the way, it is worth noting that the only one who has no flaw and is far above from any imperfection is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we humans try to emulate this trait, we invite trouble. For a perfectionist, things need to be just right and they vigilantly pursue it. Emotionally, this means that instead of living their life in a place of self-acceptance, perfectionists are on a continual treadmill chasing the elusive feeling of having everything in their lives to be just right. But even when the brief satisfaction of right is achieved, it's temporary. Then it's to the next level, next achievement and so on. Most perfectionists smile beautifully on the outside but feel frustrated, exhausted and unappreciated on the inside. Even in the social interactions, they are judgmental of people who fall short of perfection. Their expectations and demands are extremely high and they often feel disappointed, angry or resentful. All this seems very passive-aggressive, isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this life a test for us, a place to accumulate deeds and hasanat for the hereafter. We find out in Surah Al-Mulk, ayah number 2 that, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْأَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ The translation is, He who created death and life to test you as to which of you is best indeed, and He is the exalted in might and forgiving. We find out from this ayah that this world is a place of tests and trials. Therefore, our circumstances cannot be favorable all the time. Everything cannot go according to our plans or according to our wishes. The second way to spend our lives is that when it comes to the deen, all our actions and our deeds should be performed with the level of excellence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us in this world to do asan amal or good deeds. These good deeds or asan amal are very much in our reach and our control. And the best part is their recompense in the hereafter. They enable us to reach higher ranks in Jannah. As for the worldly work, we should definitely try our best. Surely work hard and then leave the rest to Allah. The outcome should be left to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we need to accept the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with patience and fortitude. Try not to question the will of Allah, but know and believe that there is always hikmah or wisdom in all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. People who adopt this second way of life are content and accept whatever comes their way. They compromise readily with people and with circumstances. They acknowledge the good which comes their way and bear the negatives with patience. They look at the good in people and ignore their shortcomings. They are quick to forgive and forget. When they are treated with kindness, they are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they come across adversity or misfortune, they persevere and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. They do not complain to people, but know that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have something better in store for them, inshallah. When they come across jealous or envious people, they ignore them and focus on the bounties present in their life. Such people are not dependent on certain objects or circumstances for gaining happiness. They have a broad perspective. They are conscious of the multitude of blessings around them and are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lack of one aspect does not pull them down. For example, if someone is unhappy with their in-laws or their spouse or they do not have children or maybe they are not married, then they do not sulk or brood over this one deficiency in their life. They understand the meaning of life. They have a broad perspective. 
these worldly things are definitely important but they do not get inundated by them if they are unmarried then they do not obsess about being single but they look at the positives of not being in a marital relationship if they do not have a house or they do not have anything any property in their name then they look at the positives of being in a rental space in case the husband is not good then they busy themselves with their kids their loving family doting friends there is always something to be thankful for the truth is whatever you focus on consistently it will become your reality focus gives power to what we focus on there is no need to deny what is unchangeably bad but while dealing with it to the extent we have to we will rather focus on what is worth having power in our lives upon so using a logical approach we set our priorities mind and body benefit from a balanced but strong positive focus not on the basics but on what we have chosen to be the purpose of our life our purpose of life should be to gain the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala to get to jannah to get to have the gift of seeing allah subhanahu wa taala to meet prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam inshallah for this we need to accept the decree of allah subhanahu wa taala be happy and content with what we have not complain or whine to people be of those who long for allah's pleasure follow the quran and sunnah not only fulfill our obligations but also make an effort to do the optional or nawafil ibadat may allah subhanahu wa taala make us amongst them ameen assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh